Hello everybody. <clears throat> um, just first, if any, anybody who can comment, if you could just let us know how the sound is. We'll play each thing and I'm talking right now, so how's my voice? And Ken, do you want to say something? Howdy! <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, do we have a bit of a delay, possibly? Sounds good. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a delay, but loud and clear, wonderful. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so we'll just give uh, another few moments for people to come in to the workshop. I do have a professional mic on right now, so you may hear more of our transitional sounds than normal, like rustling and whatnot, so pardon us for that. Uh, but to make sure that the singing bowls get the best out of the sound, the microphone is here. And I hope that works for everybody. And I will recommend later if you do have headphones accessible that you have them near you for when um, Ken does a sound bath for us with just the singing bowls I'd recommend having your headphones and for now hello everyone thank you for your comments that it sounds good I'm glad to hear it so for now, um, I'll give you guys a second if you don't have your headphones with you to go grab them and then we can start in a seated meditation. <clears throat> Simply focusing on your breath in this meditation and finding a comfortable seat, a comfortable space to sink into your body, relax into your being, and connect to your deep, slow breathing, even breaths, and really listening to your breath flowing through you. You can work with Ujjayi Pranayama or ocean breathing if that feels right to you with that slight constriction in the back of the throat. That same feeling as if you were fogging up something with your breath, like a mirror or a window, but with the inhale and the exhale moving through the throat. to this ocean breathing, this flow of prana in and out, 
And as this energy moves through with your breath, listening to the breath, purifying the body, and connect yourself to the water in your body. Feel into the blood flowing with your breath and the heart beating with that eternal sound, the heartbeat of the universe pumping through us all and the water in the body moving and shifting as you intend your breath to clear and cleanse to bring in prana to bring in energy Feel the water in your body being influenced by your breath and by your thoughts. And know that thought is vibration. And awareness to your breath with positive intention helps to transform the vibration of our thoughts which transforms the vibration of the water in our bodies. <clears throat> and this state of the water in our bodies determines the state of our well-being physically and mentally. The more clear we can be with our intentions and our thoughts, the more pure the water in our bodies becomes. And the lighter we feel, the stronger we feel, the more prana we can integrate. Allowing this prana to flow as you connect to the water of your body and the vibration of the sound begins to open your cells keeping your breath flowing Listening to your heartbeat and letting your concentration or your dharana lead to absorption in the sound and in our words, in the lessons of vibration and frequency that we bring forward at this time. Hey, I'm a man. 
na heya heya wa heya wa manna he o e heya manna he
and see your roots growing through this red, dense light, deep down through the soil below, through the floor beneath you, through the soil beneath that, past all the layers of infrastructure underneath most of us at this time, down through the true soil, through the layers of clay and rock and all the bugs and all of the little minerals that lay between the layers, down into the mineral kingdom where the crystals grow, down through this space into your roots, into yourself, into the core of the earth. And breathe in this light of Mother Earth and consider compassion. Take a deep inhale and repeat after me, releasing that breath. Inhale. I am stable. I am strong. I am grounded. I am powerful. I am stable. I am strong, I am grounded, I am powerful, I am stable, I am strong, I am grounded, I am powerful, I am stable, I am strong, I am grounded, I am powerful, I am stable, I am strong, I am grounded, I am powerful. I am stable, I am strong, I am grounded, I am powerful. And envisioning that red light circling through your hips and through your legs and rising up, rising up into the rest of the pelvis, into the reproductive zone, into the sacrum, the lower spine, the lumbar, surrounding the sacral chakra now. And before we begin or continue along and work through the sacral chakra, start to sing the sound of Lam to honor Muladhara or the root chakra. However you feel, you can do long sounds or short sounds. circles with your spine around the hip flexors, some Sufi grinds to open up the psoas muscles, to open up the hip flexors, and feel into your creative life force potential, to your reproductive power, to your sexual power, to your power to manifest, and to experience, to your power to sense, and receive subtle vibrations, energies, and to create from what you receive. And whenever you feel ready, you can come into stillness again and focus your awareness on Svadhisthana, the sacral chakra, with that orange and pink fiery light moving through Activating creativity, empowerment, and manifestation. I am creative. I am empowered. 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 I am creative. Bum, 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 bum. 
bum 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 and as this energy moves and flows rising up into manipura with yellow light and gold light really focus on the belly as you bring your breath into your belly Reminding yourself of your spine and growing the spine long and tall, rolling the shoulders back and down along the spine. And as you inhale, you fill the belly, feeding that central sun within the body. And as you exhale, the belly button goes into the spine, activating the core, bringing strength to the core, bringing strength and length to the spine. Envision this yellow and gold and consider confidence and trust. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. I am confident, I trust myself, I believe in who I am. Big sigh. Deep inhale.
to focus your attention on your third eye and envisioning that purple light opening the third eye bring your thumbs to the center of your forehead to the third eye envisioning that purple light and knowing that you can see and perceive what is real. I see the truth, I live the truth. 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 Finding a deep inhale, and a big sigh, connecting to the sound of OM. face down on your knees and connecting again into the water in your body and taking a moment to focus on the white light and the light blue light circling above the head and the thousand petaled lotus flower or a star or a rose opening above the head one petal at a time opening to receive the light of the universe. Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namastute Om A calling to the energy of Vishnu, <clears throat> the energy of Vayu, the energy of the Lord of Preservation of Life Force to bring the teachings of air and vibration into this space and to bring the sacred song of the universe into this space of learning as we explore our connections to sound and the self and sound and the universe. Tuning in your awareness again to the sound of your breath. This sound is always available to you to remind you of the vibration of life, the ebb and flow of the cycles of existence. And this energy, this vibration of sound moving through us all and moving through the tides of the ocean, the orbits of the planets, moving through the fires of the sky, of the sun, of the stars. This infinite sound of the inward flow of prana and the outward flow of apana and the infinite sound of the beat of the heart resonate out the vibration which consists and makes up the om. The om sound is the unifying vibration which binds together the spirit into the material realms in connection with the supreme soul 
this sound and vibration represents and moves us through our universal connection to the cycles of life, death, and rebirth <clears throat> as this sound is primal, initial, and constant, and never-ending, and reaches and permeates throughout all things and throughout the universe in various different frequencies or various different levels. And at this time, I invite you to connect into your heart and into your memories and consider your favorite music or your favorite sounds you've heard or words you like even and think of why that might be. Every word, every sound, every style of information, of music, of, of vibration can and will invoke or change what we're feeling or what we're experiencing depending on the vibration or the state of which it comes from. And sometimes we're drawn to different things, different music, different sounds, different words in our lives, or we use different words, different sounds to express ourselves as a result of what we're feeling. And sometimes there are vibrations around us or in, in presence with us that are also shifting our vibration so that our feeling changes and becomes more drawn to something that perhaps isn't necessarily uh, the most beneficial for the biological being or for the metaphysical or mental being. So there are some sounds that you could say are not, not necessarily healing sounds, and then there are sounds that you can say are much more aligned with the healing vibration or a vibration of, of upliftment or a vibration of bringing a higher frequency or higher resonance. Not to say that that makes any sound necessarily bad, but it may not be healthy to listen to all the time. And an example of that that we have present in our world today is a lot of machine noise due to th construction and um, constant development and planes and cars constantly making a buzz which actually lessens the natural resonance or natural vibration of the earth and makes it harder for us to listen to the frequency of the earth. So it could be pretty easily put together that we're likely also being affected by that vibrational loss or that discord in frequency. So it is a common practice in, uh, I would say, most traditions or most um, traditional cultures, indigenous cultures, that uh, there is a practice of sound, of, of song, or of instrument that is used to specifically to channel the expression of the divine, um, of whatever that expression is to the respective cultures. In um, the Hindu teachings <clears throat> there and in the Indian teachings in general, we know the word mantra is, uh, is a word which is relative to clearing the fluctuations of the mind or stilling the mind. Uh, mantra is a word that is synonymous with, with the language of Sanskrit and it, it's uh, kind of a symbol of everything that comes through in Sanskrit in a way as all of Sanskrit can become a mantra because it all ties in together and each sound has a specific vibration. But what makes a mantra really a mantra is the repetition of the sounds in a specific order for a specific intention. So mantras that we've learned in our teacher training so far include Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo and Sat Nam. And we know that Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo is to tune in at the beginning of Kundalini. But this mantra is uh, greater than just to tune in for Kundalini and, and deeper or more ancient than just to tune in to a specific practice. It represents the totality of all things in the name of the divine wisdom of, of God or of creation to call that name to ourselves, to bring that name within ourselves and recognize it within ourselves, similar to Namaste. And then Sat Nam is the truth is my name. And Sat literally means truth and Nam means name or truth, uh, truth name, truth identity. And this mantra is used to tune out from Kundalini, but it's also 
a mantra that is used to connect us to the inner truth and the truth of the all that is and even just the practice of repeating those sounds is is in itself a form of yoga which is called bhakti yoga or devotional yoga so mantras are often found in devotional yoga in um in also many other religions whether it's hindu teachings or uh, sikh teachings or muslim or in teachings of islam or christian teachings where they have hymns there is generally a sound or a singing or an instrument that is relative to the tradition that wants to translate a message um, through the vibration of the sound then many indigenous cultures use the drum like similar to one, the one that i have and african cultures use many different kinds of drums you have the didgeridoo in uh in australia with the aborigine um and then we have a set of singing bowls here which are mostly tibetan singing bowls uh, even though these are actually from india my set is actually from india they're technically tibetan singing bowls still and these are all different forms of sound healing and these have had thousands of years of practice traditions to tune people into the, that divine frequency or vibration. And sometimes just these sounds themselves are used to tune into the state of meditation. You might just focus on the sound of a bowl or just focus on the sound of a drum um, as opposed to using a mantra. And sometimes the singing bowls each have a different frequency or a different intention. The set that I have, these ones are each a different chakra. Uh, not gonna lie, I can't remember each of them, but they do have these little labels, most of them still on the bottom of them, in case I forget. And, uh, but there's all, also different interpretations of which sound resonates with which vibration or which uh, frequency resonates with which chakra uh, changes depending on what, tra what uh, tradition is, is talking about it and whether they're coming from the idea that it's connected to the planet uh, that the chakra is connected to and the frequency of that planet or whether it's connected to the person and their frequency in their in their own uh, aura or or their own energy body which is different for every person and again changes by how you feel so that can also link us into why some people like some kinds of music and some people like other kinds of music and also why some people find it easier to concentrate with silence and and or easier to concentrate with sound uh, and then there's a bridge there as well that comes along with balancing the nervous system and balancing the hemispheres of the brain that as we become more bridge between the left and right hemispheres and more balanced within the uh, parasympathetic nervous system that um, you can basically there's states of meditation where you can sink into a very deep concentrated meditation say in the middle of a, of a downtown core with uh, traffic passing right beside you where you can become non-distracted by that by sinking into the state of meditation that has already been integrated by balancing the nervous system so <clears throat> pardon me so sometimes using sound to do that or to over experience vibration in something like a gong bath um, can actually make you sort of feel like it's too much vibration or too much sound but then what happens after that experience of being super blasted with high frequency or light filled vibration or light frequency vibration then the um so well, the best word that comes to me is the onslaught of machine noise actually becomes dull and softer and it doesn't hit your aura or hit your field as as strongly and you that vibration of say the singing bowls or or a gong stays around you and stays with you and kind of clears that interference from around you and then you can even use that tool like the ohm 
or the object of a mantra or a singing bowl itself or even just I mean everybody's probably noticed when you pass uh, say a busker playing music on the street who's quite good with their music you notice the complete difference of energy in that one zone of, of where you're moving and that's the vibration of the sound and the intention of the sound lessening that um, discordant uh, what mechanical vibration and other than that just to go back into why I started with uh, meditating on the water of our bodies is because all sound travels through water and all water is is um, changed or shifted or can be manipulated by sound and there have been many studies that have shown now which have been sort of repeat studies of uh, Dr. Emoto's water study uh, a Japanese doctor who uh, did a water study where you take uh, water and label it with a word and then take the droplet of that when it's frozen and put it under a microscope to see how it crystallized, how the ice crystals formed. And normally, I mean, probably everybody has seen a picture of a snowflake, a snowflake and how it's all designed in beautiful geometry. Um, but when uh, a word like hate is placed on that water, it becomes more like a, a blob and it sort of falls apart. The molecular structure becomes distorted as a result of the intention. And that now there's been many repeat studies done with how music affects plants and their growth. Um, di various different forms of that water study have been done. Uh, things with rice, I believe, also have been done and, and how quickly it molds or not um, and what the intention or what the words are associated with it. They've also done now, now also studies with just transferring thought from prayer from Buddhist monks and seeing if it does the same thing with the water and have found that, yes, it actually does. Um, focusing on the lotus mantra Renge Ong Nam <clears throat> Yoho Renge Ko, <clears throat> which is a Buddhist mantra, uh, completely changed the structure of of water. They've seen from from instead of putting words like hate or they've tried things like figures like Hitler before and found that it turns into just this messy black kind of image. And then these mantra, like Buddhist mantras, it turns into this mandala-like thing. So uh, I would recommend looking into um, vibration and water or water and frequency studies or water and thought, water and sound. And you can see more about that. And why I feel that's important to mention here is because we are constantly influencing the cells in our bodies or the water in our bodies and they are <clears throat> constantly being influenced um, by external input. De depending on what we're bringing in, sometimes the vibration of the water in our bodies is actually being torn apart or, di or distorted into these non-crystalline structures or these unhealthy structures, which over time damages our DNA. And of course, like if you know, if you can just mathematically think about it, that you're you, we are all around 80 percent or so water, they say now, um, or even potentially more. And that also quantum physicists say that we're actually 98.9 percent .9 space uh, somehow. And the, and the only matter is that last one percent or one and a half percent or whatever. <laughs> Um, and so however that works, if you know that you're 80% water and you know, and you know, and it has been visibly measured by science that you can say a word to water and it co it changes the structure of the molecules, then to consider what we say to ourselves in our heads, what people say to us and what we're absorbing in, uh, um, in our, in our forms of entertainment or in our media or social media, uh, the words that you read, the words that you hear, the vibrations you see, those are having an effect and they do change the structure of your being. So there, there's not to say that you can hide from it all because the vibration of it is everywhere, but there are tools that can set, set the cells back into a healthy place or a healthy alignment. Um, yeah, informationally, that's basically all that I wanted to offer around that for now. Um, you know that I use a lot of sound in teaching, 
And that is because I come from a very bhakti yoga type of place, especially now in my life, and um, feel that the sound is a very powerful tool for any of us to be using because it is universal. Everybody has a voice. There are different instruments all across the world. Okay, well, yes, thanks, universe. Not necessarily every single person has a physical voice. I do understand that. Everybody has thoughts, <laughs> at least, I guess, so we can get away with that one, maybe. Um, but sure, there are some people that don't have a voice, pardon me. And But sound can be felt and experienced <laughs> by everybody, which is definitely true. <laughs> everybody can feel and experience sound in some way, shape, or form. And I do believe that is why most traditions have come up with some kind of instrument as a mediator between ourselves and the spirit world. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have about that. Did you want to talk about the bowls a bit? Oh yeah, I might. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, the bowls. Uh, where do we start? Uh, well, let me just tell you how I got introduced into the bowls uh, and how I got to be here in the shortest way I can do it. Um, a few yeah, years... A few, with that? You have time. I have time. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Christina invited me and my uh, lady to come to a, a crystal sound bath. I had no idea what it was. So I went to self, are we going to go to this uh, crystal sound bath? And I went, yep, let's go. And I knew nothing about it. And what I, when I reflect back on what I really love about the experience was I didn't have an inkling to look and find out what it was about. It was just felt right and went with it. Trusted a friend and here we go. Uh, going into this sound bath not having a clue about it, it was a quite an interesting thing for me. When I first got into the meditative state and started getting inside and then started hearing the sound, the first thing that came through me was like, oh, I remember you. And to me, it was like a conversation. It was, it was how we communicated at one time, something. It was so familiar, but it seemed so far away. And then it was there again. Um, with that, I, it just, of course, I was just in awe. Just, it was beautiful. And as I carried on through the, uh, the sound bath, listening and, and feeling just going, this is awesome. Um, I had done some damage to my ankle, uh, about a year previous to it and had some work done with it with, with energy and such and it couldn't finish it I couldn't finish it off for some reason the healing didn't finish and it, it kind of confused me in the sound bath as I was lying there my ankle started to itch and burn like the healing itch and burn if you've ever experienced it and then after the sound bath was done I stood up and stood on my foot and I was like are you kidding me <laughs> like and then I started to think about it and I went, that makes perfect sense. Like he, Eli has perfectly explained the physics of it and the water, the vibrations and how everything coincides. In that moment of my life, it surprised me that I completely missed that part of the equation in, you know, the balance equation, so to speak. From there, I was hooked. I started off by random. We're at the p and &E, and, uh, it's an exhibition and I looked down a, a laneway and I seen these guys here and I seen it like that on a table and I was like hey those are pretty cool pestles and mortars <laughs> <laughs> so I went walking down thinking hey that might be kind of cool and then realized hey there are sound bowls now I'd only been familiar with the uh, crystal bowls but I had heard and you know and just randomly seen Tibetan bowls but never paid much attention Luckily enough to be introduced to a fellow who was, you know, marketing them. He had been a Tibetan monk for over 12 years and it, he got out of the monk thing for whatever his reasons, his wife and, and whatever his life was, it didn't matter. But he had a real beautiful energy and I could feel it. And I knew not, not much about him and he started to explain some things and he said one thing that really stuck with me with, it came to, uh, with regards to the bowls is that when he was practicing, uh, in the, they weren't allowed to touch him for four years. They had a whole process. So what I gathered from that information that a great deal of respect is given to the bowls because they are actual functional tools. 
they do create. They do diminish. They activate. They do all these sort of things. We're all vibration. We're all grooving to it. These are tools to help us align when we're misaligned. That's the short and sweet about the bowls. Now you see a whole bunch in front of you here. Necessarily, more doesn't mean the merrier. I was actually thinking about it in reflection a few years back when I just started off with these three bowls that randomly showed up in my life and uh, through this event, which started it all. If you have one bowl is, and you find one you like, it is a fantastic way to just decompress, center, take five minutes to yourself, 10 minutes to yourself. You will learn that it will uh, teach you probably more than you just trying to play it, so to speak. Um, yeah, they're just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Eli's already talked enough about it. So, my what got me involved, because I'm very skeptical and everything, I wish I kind of wasn't, it'd be easier. I did feel the real physical effects. Now, being that we're more than, you know, just physical, we have all these other energy fields too. We need to clean them too. We, we, we think about our skin and our hands and, you know, a daily, keep that clean. But a lot of us, even those that are woke um you forget about because it it's not it's not everyday programming in everyday life and it's easy enough so it takes takes some practice and bowls is a great way to wash so henceforth sound bath it is actually really a bath you can help balance out and and why they make such a fantastic healing tool yes the assistance of the vibrations and you know you can get stuck first just with the simple pleasure of just how it feels or hears but you're actually creating a space for your own healing to happen. All healing comes, what you have to be able to do in healing is give it an environment to heal. So a broken bone, yes, we cast it. You know, that's one way of doing things. You know, is can't bug it, it's, it's got an environment. Uh, all sorts of things. When we're looking at diseases and other things, th these are imbalances, these are things telling you things. And this is just my belief system, don't, don't quote me on this, but this is how I feel. So if you're feeling these ailments and these other things coming on or you're having it, there's an imbalance. Now bulls and stuff, uh, Eli and I have kind of conversed about this. When I first started getting in, in interested into it, I thought, okay, I better try to get into the science of it. You know, I, I hear arguments about the 440, the 432, these hurts and this and this and this and this. And I started reading them around, reading around and I finally just went, no, no more. Because we don't know which is the true information. What do we have that we can rely on? Is yourself and how you feel mm -hmm. and from there that's where we start if it gets into something when I think about it that's more dramatic organs are failing certain things science and let's hope they're telling us the right stuff each organ everything resonates at a certain frequency certain vibration so yes there's tuning forks that I've heard I've done great things because you can be more pinpoint specific with certain things bowls too and if you start to line up the mathematics of it, sure. But really, in the end, it's becoming centered with self. And from there, everything can happen. It really can. There's so many cases we've heard across the globe over the years now, especially being that we're more interconnected with the, uh, via the web. You know, people healing themselves, you know, of cancers and, and evil shit. Like, just brutal. And they're doing it. You know, through holistic practices, mindfulness, becoming center. Almost every story will always come back to somebody. They're finally coming back to their center. They're remembering. They are remembering. All this other shit is coming because of the disconnect. And, and the goal is to remember. And Eli really put it well uh, a couple of weeks ago about, yeah, we're living in reverse. And I heard that in a song too. And I'd listen to it. And it, so these things are like, and I, when I was looking, I'm going, yeah, we are. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> um, so the biggest thing is to try to remember. You're not really expanding yourself to learn anything new. You're not. What you're doing is deprogramming to your truth. Um, and I know this, and, and I will stand behind it, because on a random thought when I started breaking open when I was younger, the one thought popped into my head, and it was, 
who were you before they told you who you were? You know, that's the short, you, you see it a lot now, but you know, 25, 30 years ago, nobody talked like that, <laughs> at least not in my circle. And I uh, didn't really know what meditation was, but I had one experience with uh, a person trying to do a path life regression on me. And what I got out of that experience was actually how powerful the breath is. That was it. I mean, I was a teenager. I didn't know much, but I was like, whoa, there's something to that. And I realized it put me into a different state. Uh, so then I started with that and then I started to think, who was I before this? And you start getting to some pretty neat places that you forgot about. Uh, because we are being programmed into a society for their own reasons. It's not really love based. Some of it got the illusion of it, but yeah, no, it's, it's a whole bunch of uh, tricky stuff out there. Uh, but questioning it and learning about the breath, this is kind of what started to help open up things. Um, and here we are, and I kind of lost my thought there somewhere. I was on a travel. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's the biggest thing. So yeah, oh yeah, we're remembering. That's what we're doing, is we're remembering. You got it. It's just knocking off the shit that's been collected. And whether it was your fault or not, it's your responsibility to either keep... Or release doesn't matter it's creating your own inner peace if that's what you want you'll be dealing with things that you might have been programmed with ideal ideologies all that sort of stuff and the easiest question to know is is it coming from a loving place anything that's being done if you're questioning is it coming from a loving place if it is then it's right on if it isn't you can start seeing the imbalance and a lot of us are waking up to that, seeing that imbalance. You know, the greed, the corruption, all that silly shit out there. I, I, it's, to me, it's little kids playing. They're scared. They, they've been disconnected from their true self. And <laughs> we're magnificent. And uh, there's a fear of trying to hold on to try to find that feeling, to try to get that connection again. Misguided. Do, do, do. So... Lately, as of late, with all the upheavals that are happening, God bless them, really, you know, it usually gets darker before it gets brighter. Hopefully it doesn't have to get too dark. Um, with all the upheavals, I'm finding myself, I was having a real tricky time. I was getting involved with the conversation, so to speak. I was getting angry. Fucking people pulling up my hair. And then I realized, no, they're just kids learning. And that's how I perceive it. Now, it might sound pompous or whatever, but this is fine, fine, I, how I find my peace with the pain. And instead, when this information comes in, like, oh, Trump's doing this, and I'm and throwing anger at it, throw a little love. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. Just thank it. Just thank it. It is working for a reason, but to... Start just whatever water cooler talking this and that, this and that, nah, 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 about all that program. Even if you're coming from a good place, it's still pulling you away. When you're connected to source, it doesn't even, this isn't even part of the equation. This is an equation that's been made from separation. So we're remembering to come back. And once we're back, <laughs> we wouldn't be out here right now. So this is a progression over time and now we're coming back. So anyways. Basically, I've been loving the, the bowls because, in essence, it has been helping me remember. Every day we need to take that decompress. I don't do it enough sometimes. In fact, when I got here today, I, before I came in, I was asked to be smudged. It's just, <laughs> yeah, you got to take time and you have to be mindful. Um, I'm loving how that the, the, the perception is, is altering uh, to it being a little bit more of a comfortable topic. Things that I find to be truth. Um, so yeah, you know, things are moving. There's there's shitloads of hope. There's a lot of beauty. There's so there everything's great. Um <laughs> Yeah, okay. That's about it. I have no idea what, what I'm doing, but here we go. Awesome. So, okay, so when it comes to the bowls, here's some fun things with the bowls. If you got one bowl, so you don't need to have a million bowls. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. One bowl. With this one bowl, all right. We could you can do aura cleansing with your friends. You know, that's fun. But it does. You make an interaction. You're making a connection. You're having some fun. Good things come from that. So that's something you can do with the bowls. Something, uh, 
which is really neat when talking about the molecular structure and of the water. When I did my Tibetan water bowl course, or a singing bowl course, we did a water ceremony. Now this was interesting because it was something, again, you know, science and spirituality, you know, bridging. You know, you can feel it. You got to wait till science proves it. Um, decompressing the water molecule. And you play it in a Tibetan bowl. The copper helps purify it, of course. And they have a system. And when you do it, they've shown it in science that they've taken dead water and they've brought it back to life. All our water is pretty much dead. It's been polluted by, you know, fluorines, chlorine, whatever, all that other shit. Our emissions, all of it. You know, all the stuff humans do. <laughs> okay? And they have their reasons. We don't have to go into that. But <laughs> however, this is one way to get energized. Okay? Now, sounds, of course, re re represent in the theories, you know, with the chakras and different colors. But one thing that I, I think is pretty cool and take note of is the note A apparently... Uh, uh, to one author, and I might have the name of him, who does studies on the water. It might have even been the fellow that you know I was talking about. But the note A emits pink light in the cell. So it's fantastic. Knowing the physics of the body and how we are like pretty much empty space and all water. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to be balancing out this way. Um, well, let's see if I can get back on track here. So there's a lot of things you can do with the bowls. You can do a sound massage. You can put them on the body. Um, regenerate water. Apparently, I have not done this test yet, but I was told that you create an electric current, actually. Mm -hmm. And it can be, with just a regular old electrical current meter, it can be picked up. Um, yeah. Out of all the things, and I think Eli even mentioned it, this, this actually really makes me makes me chuckle when I think about it. And it happened more when I was younger. When you're concentrating on something, have you ever noticed you just hum sometimes? Mm. And you're trying to figure something out. And you might just start humming, you know, just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. It's a vibration. The most powerful tool on the face of the planet when it comes to external shit is the human voice. The vibration of. So we all have it. So you don't really have to be loaded up to get the benefits. So, but I reflect back on it going, yeah, man, that's pretty weird. You need to be concentrating about something. You can't figure it out. You're like, hmm, even that, hmm, <laughs> that's right there. Ooh. So it's beautiful. It's like right there. Mm -hmm. And if you need more proof to vibration, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but so we naturally have that. Um, each bowl represents different chakras, different colors. I don't really get too much into it again. Uh, they probably have very valid proof. I don't know about it because I'm my, my path is more about the experience and seeing how it feels. Certain bowls do certain things. Something that was really interesting that I found with this bowl here, uh, the other night when I was playing, normally I sit in a chair and this is at my feet and I have my other bowls above me. And my leg was up against the table and this above it. As I was going, I was feeling this pulse through my leg and my side here. So at first I just thought it was my body. Still the body made sure, paid attention, used the other hand, didn't. It was following, I could feel this around me. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter. So then when I turned it and reversed it, it did the same thing. So something's happening <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in a good way. Uh, yeah, with the bowls, uh, there's theories too, um, and I, I say theories because even my teachers, and I've had uh, two different teachers, one in crystal bowls, I got my level three, whatever that means, not to knock it, um, it's, but advanced, and in Tibetan, they both teach two different styles, and it's two different ways, and it's vibration, so I was a little confused. Uh, the crystal guy, I don't, I don't want to talk how to turn, at first didn't seem too keen on the idea of the Tibetan bowl because he was mindset was more and then he realized well vibrate well he already probably knew i can't speak on his behalf but with the crystal bowls they play one note each and each note they have a system that they feel is connecting and could be be true tibetan bowls play more than one note how you hold them 
your pressures, the way you apply them. These are wild. That's how my my lady teacher who taught me these, they're <laughs> wild. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And you'll really find that they play different on different days, even if it's the same bowl. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's outside influences, of course, of, you know, temperature, humidity, you know, air pressures, stuff like that. And also the subtleties that you might not be aware of, which I find to be very cool when you're playing them, even if it's just the one bowl, it you might think you're really cool and balanced or you're in a good place and you might not be, might just need a little tweak, a little tweak, a little tweak, and you'll hear it. It'll respond to you. You guys are buddies. <laughs> There's a connection. And uh, those are just the fun magic things about it. Uh, the rest of it, I'd rather you guys just kind of experience on your own. Because everybody's experience is different. All I know is what it's done for me. It fixed my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, when I play, it takes me to places. I, it reminds me, I go, yeah, 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 there we go, they're just awesome. Yeah, Beautiful. Anything? Okay, thanks, yeah. That's a wonderful, <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, if you have your headphones with you, and if you feel like you want to set up a little spot to lie down, um, take a moment now to do that. Yeah, can and, you give me five minutes? Yeah, and we're just going to take a five minute bathroom break and then and you can set up a comfy spot because you might want to lie down for the sound bath. It's totally up to you. So we're going oh, to yeah. be back in like five minutes pretty much exactly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rather... And yeah, get your headphones ready.
Yeah. But three people went away, but I don't know. Maybe they'll come back. Um, okay, so we're back. <laughs> sure. And if anybody want, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type a comment and we'll give a few minutes to see if anybody else pops back onto the live. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to type a comment. Or if you have any comments, it doesn't have to be a question. Um, what else was there? Oh yeah, the laying down and sitting down, and, or sitting. You know, one's more more active. You know. One's relaxing. Uh, but there was one other thing I meant to say. Oh, the other thing I really like to make note of. Uh, I just briefly went with you know on the body uh, bowls and stuff. Pregnant ladies, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. The, oh, here, stupid throat. Um, water, sound is amplified five times in water at least. So if you're working with somebody who's pregnant, yeah, take that in note. Uh, it's also not recommended if somebody's got a pacemaker to have a bowl on their chest and start spinning it. It's just not recommended. Uh, but I think these are kind of important to relay out there. Because it's yeah, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, so, oh yeah, did I talk about the cracking? Probably. I think. Um. Oh, but here's something. Here, here's one quote. And oh my God. Oh yeah, Ellen Ellen Day McCookish. Uh, she wrote the book Tuning the Human Bi Biofield. Now, this is what the tuning forks, but what she had to say was, we have all gotten so lost in the words that we have forgotten that they are a poor approximation for deeper truths. <laughs> and I thought that was brilliant. Because the one thing I do like when I'm playing with the bowls, the sound, the vibrations, and everything, that I'm, when it's right here, I know it's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it hasn't been tampered with. It's This is it. And, yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay, friends, so if you don't have any questions, I think I'm getting the comments, but love me some sound bath. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> we'll get the sound bath moving. <laughs> oh, yeah, so like with it too. Also, other things, you know, if you found one boy, you might want to work with it just to function, but like sound baths, yeah, these are fun. <laughs> I never know which way they're gonna go. Um, I I do my best to get out of my own way and just let you know, like spirit flow. Uh, yeah, so okay. Everyone, take a few big deep breaths. Find your comfy place.
at a time back into your awareness back into your physical body back into your being and say thank you to your body maybe place your hands over your heart or one over your heart and one over your belly and just say thank you to your body. Say I love you to yourself. Filling your body with these thoughts of healing and letting that healing energy wash through you, wash over you, bringing peace, bringing purification, and bringing upliftment to your being. And from wherever you are, whether you're still laying down or if you've moved into a seat, you can bring your hands into prayer. And just in your own space where you are, we'll send an ocean of Om across the world. So I'll just keep Oming for some time with my breath and you do the very same where you are and it will naturally sort of settle. Big inhale, big breath out. Get all your air out and fill up with as much prana as you can.
sending healing light and sounds across the world praying that this vibration of love and healing spread from you through you into all things thank you so much Ken oh thank you <laughs> thank you everybody thank you yeah um now there is a break technically because tomorrow is our integration day so we have an evening class coming from Carly um, at 6 so that you can practice some more yoga before the end of your day or for some of you the beginning of your day by the time you watch it and of course feel free to keep it for tomorrow if you want to and we will also be having an integration day zoom call open to all students of all of the school <laughs> uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. and recommend that you guys attend if you are available otherwise at 9 a.m. PST that is otherwise we will announce that again later and make sure that it's on the announcements tomorrow and you can feel free to comment any questions you have about the bowls, about sound, about healing on the comment thread here. Ken has access to it also for later, um, or maybe not in this group yet. Or yeah, yeah. in this group, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so any comments or questions, we will get to them over the next days. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here and being present with us. Thank you. Namaste. Aho. May the sound of home guide you home. Cute.